Welcome back to the channel, folks. Welcome back to another video while on quarantine here in Orange County, California. We're making the best of it. I am going to go and drive my car around the block and talk to you all about the three different Dodge Challengers that I've owned. I've owned the RT 5.7, I owned the RT Scat Pack, the 6.4 liter, and now I own the Hellcat Red Eye. And I'm going to share with you what I loved and what I hated about each of these cars and which car I would recommend that you buy if you're thinking about buying one of these. But first, check this out. This is how she's getting through quarantine. I can't go out there or I'll get copyrighted with the music. Let's see. Watch this. Hey, you want to be on video now? Yeah, no? I don't think so. All right, let me show you all the new sign we got for the wall. Look at that. Is that not awesome or what? I have this. This will be going up somewhere or it will be given away to a lucky winner who follows me on Instagram. Which brings me back to this little update I want to give you all, which is the giveaways are going great. I did not expect, I didn't expect to have as much fun doing it. Um, and certainly I, I'm loving it. I'm loving making people's days while they're on lockdown and giving away some cool stuff. So I'm on like my eighth giveaway right now on Instagram and I've still got five or six more things to go. And frankly, I'm, I think I might just start buying stuff and giving it away, not because I'm trying to get something out of everybody, but as a thank you for everybody following and supporting the channel. And I'm bring, it feels like I'm bringing a little happiness to people out there that are locked in their houses. So once a week I go and ship this stuff out and it's just great to see the reactions of people when they win. But first, let's go ahead and roll the intro. Showing off, don't wanna have to wait tonight, wait tonight. Bets are off, I'm gonna find my way tonight, wait tonight. All right, so let's get started. But first, I've gotta show you these awesome badges that I found on Etsy. Never knew what the heck Etsy was and I found out the other day and now I'm buying all kinds of cool stuff. So a couple things. These badges I'll put here while I'm talking are Hellcat badges with the N95 masks on them. Like how awesome is that for today's world that we're living in. So I ordered these. I don't know how they're going to look and I may temporarily remove the Hellcat red eye badges from this car and put those on there just for fun until we can get the other side of this thing. Uh, my biggest fear is getting the other ones back on in the exact right place, so we'll see about that. And then check out this mask that I bought, and I tried to buy five of them. I'm gonna keep one for myself, obviously, and I'll probably keep a backup, and I'll give away three. So as long as they show up in a week or so, and um, you know are good, we'll give them away. So. Follow me on Instagram to participate in all these drawings and giveaways. I'm having so much fun doing this and uh, bringing some happiness to all of you out there or those of you out there that are winning and um, just something to break the monotony in this crazy world we're living in right now. So let's talk about my, uh, my cars that I've owned and what I'd recommend that you buy. I owned the, let's talk about the 5.7 liter RT Challenger, the white knuckle with the black stripe down the middle that I bought about three years ago on an impulse, literally a Saturday night, just went into the dealership and bought the car, didn't research the car, did nothing, and ended up with it because it looked really cool and it sounded really cool. But I'll tell you, what I loved about it was how it looked awesome. The price was amazing. I mean, it was like $35,000 or $33,000. It was really cheap in comparison to all, a lot of the other um, challengers that I was looking at and I didn't didn't quite get the difference I mean it felt fast to me because I was driving a 740 BMW which wasn't I mean it was quick but it was a big huge car so getting that thing with all the noise it seemed like it was it was really just an awesome car it light up the tires and the exhaust was super loud and <laughs> pretty fun so um, definitely uh, got looks and it was a fun car, but here's the problem After you have the RT 5.7 for a little while uh, It to me it just felt it just felt really slow um, And I made an embarrassing video where I was acting really frustrated while definitely wishing I would have stepped up and bought the uh, 6.4 liter 
um, and I got so much crap. I'm not even gonna tell you to go watch that thing because it was that it was just so bad. It got tons of views, but totally embarrassing of me whining about how slow it was. And those of you with 5.7s, I mean, look, I'm not, I'm not crapping on your car. Any of these, any one of these things. So you can go to XSXT. They're awesome. They look great. They're fun to drive. You got to get what you can get. And I don't want anybody thinking they got to go out and break the bank just to keep up with the Joneses. But if you're if you're looking for the most fun in a car, the 5.7 definitely is lacking for horsepower, for speed. Um, I'm sure you can beef it up. You can do some engine work on it, void your warranty, and create a whole bunch of other nightmares. But I wasn't going to do that. It just wasn't fast. It just once you get moving, like off the line, it was was not fast. Once you get moving up on the highway, it was pretty good, and it de it definitely can keep up with pretty much you know most cars out there. So it wasn't a slouch at that point. But I like taking off from a start. Um, I like from a straight stop. I like doing pulls after you're moving 30, 40 miles an hour. And that car, you're not going to get that. You're going to get the looks. You're going to get the noise, the sound, and you know the whole feeling behind having a muscle car, but you're gonna miss out on a lot, and you're gonna, you're gonna want for more. There's no way around it. And what I figured out with that car also was there's a lot of aesthetics as well as electronics that are missing. Now, I don't know about the 2020s, but I know mine was a 2018. It did not have the, uh, those um, SRT pages. It didn't have, uh, I think they, you call them, they were called something else. Anyways, it didn't have those to be able to do any of the drive uh, mode, real drive mode changes. Um, it didn't, the biggest thing that drove me nuts is it didn't have the, sorry, it did not have the um, automatic start. So that drove me crazy too, because one of the best things about this car is being able to stand back there and do the cold start where you're, you're getting ready in the morning to take off and you couldn't do it. And to add that in, it was somewhere between 700 and a thousand bucks, just wasn't worth it after I had the car. And then the tires and wheels that come are really lacking, so you're probably gonna need to change those to really make the car look sporty and look like a muscle car. And the ride height, it sat way too high compared to the Scat Pack or pretty much any of the other upgraded versions of that car. And I had to lower it, so then I went and spent, I don't remember what it, what it was, seven, eight hundred dollars to throw some Mopar lowering springs on the car to make it look better. That video is on my channel as well. You can go see it. And after I was all done with that, I just realized, you know, I'm missing the front, the real, the great looking front um, splitter. It was not like in the scat packs, just a lot of little cosmetic things that just, just left me really wanting more. So four or five months later, I took a beating and traded it in and I got the 6.4 scat pack, which I knew I wanted at the beginning anyways. I was cheaping out. I got hooked at the dealership. Um, I also went and looked at a TA, which was beautiful destroyer gray with the black hood and the hood pins and stripes down the side. I mean, it was just, it was beautiful. Um, but the dealership just really blew the deal and ended up finding the black and black scat pack. That car, to me, was the perfect car. It had the horsepower I needed. What was it? 485 horsepower. Um, it had all the performance pages. That's what I was trying to say earlier. The performance pages had the, the remote start. It had cool graphics on the back. It had the awesome front splitter. It had the cool B badges on the side. I mean, and I got the sunroof. I got everything in that thing, and it was great. Just cloth interior, but I didn't care about that. But the car was great. And that car, for the money, looking, I, I think, just under... I don't know, 40 grand, maybe 40, 41,000 with everything in it, was not that much more than the 5.7 in payment. And in hindsight, I should have just bought that because I ended up losing a bunch of money on that other car. The Scat Pack has everything I think anybody needs in one of these cars. It is an absolute blast. It was a joy to own. And in hindsight, if I could just go back a couple of months, I would have bought this Hellcat kept that the scat pack and figured out how to just pay that thing off and keep this thing and never get rid of it and just enjoy driving that thing every day because now i'm going to tell you about the hellcat red eye so now i step way up i bypass everything else bypass the regular hellcat and i go all the way because i'm tired of you know taking these steps and each step costs me five to ten thousand dollars 
just to get out of the other car into the next car and that's getting dumb and it's just a waste of money and a lesson I had learned the hard way and I knew better but I did it anyways so I bought the Hellcat Red Eye I went all the way with the wide body everything and there were not many for sale at least where I live in Orange County so I found two found a white one and a black one and I made a deal and you guys watch my other videos you know what I paid for it you know what I pay for it every month um, you got all that information but bottom line is for about eighty four thousand dollars you're looking at from a scat pack and now if you go to the scat pack wide body you know around that fifty five thousand dollar range um, it's a thirty thousand dollar difference to buy a Hellcat Red Eye thirty grand then if you go to Edmunds.com which I love that website now I do my research there Edmunds.com you can look at the five-year cost of ownership they base it on 15,000 miles a year and you can compare car after car after car and when you compare the scat pack to the red eye which I get it it's a significant difference but there's like a million reasons not just financially to get the scat pack I mean gas mileage alone is going to be a lot better on the scat pack on the Hellcat red eye I'll tell you that it is downright astonishing how bad the gas mileage is I'm not complaining because this isn't my primary driver. I don't drive this every single day. I mean, I kind of did and I was biting the bullet before we got on lockdown. But it's it's obnoxiously um, ridiculous on gas. It's not practical. It's completely impractical um, for a lot of reasons. But the primary one is you're just going to burn so much gas. You think of it like this. It says 84 miles range and I'm at half a tank. So you're looking at about 160 miles of range on a tank. And to put that in perspective, on my scat pack, I was probably closer to 275, 300. If I didn't drive the daylights out of it um, really hard, I could really squeeze a lot of miles out of that gas tank. Problem with the Hellcat is, it's like being the biggest guy that walks into the bar. Everyone wants to fight you. So everyone wants to race you. Everyone. I get a guy in a Lexus SUV next to me and start revving their engine. Everybody wants to hear you step on it and you want to give that to them. I mean, you spend all this money on this car. Somebody sees it. They're excited about it. They they think it's the coolest thing in the world and, and they don't want you just to be that jerk who's kind of like this. What's up, man? No, I'm not that guy. I'm going to be like, yeah, dude, I love the car too. It's cool. And then I'm going to step on it, show them what it can do, you know, maybe rev the motor. I do this all day when I'm driving this thing and I'm sucking gas like you wouldn't believe and I'm down to 12 miles to the gallon. 12, 12 to 13. Now I know people are going to comment and go, I get 20 miles to the gallon on my car. Then you're driving and no offense to Corvette owners, but I'm telling you between Corvette owners and I, I own a Prius and Prius owners, you know, it's, it's, it's like people buy it and then drive it super slow just to drive everybody around them crazy. I'm t if I if I had a nickel for every time I pulled up to a Corvette that was two car lengths behind the crosswalk at a stoplight, I'd, I you know I'd pay off my car. And look, I'm not bashing. I love the new C8 Corvette. I think they're great. But drive the ha drive the car, man. You got a fast car. Step on it. Drive it. But it seems like there's just this this I don't know thing that that they do where they just don't drive the damn car. This thing, I don't have a choice, man. I'm gonna drive the car, I'm gonna stomp on it, I'm gonna push it, I'm gonna be safe. I'm not, I mean, I've got no tickets so far, but I'm gonna do some pulls and, and make people's day when they see the car. That means that I'm gonna burn gas like crazy. It also means I'm gonna burn tires. It means there's some wear and tear that I'm going through on the car. But I'll tell you, in the end, there's not a, there's not a more fun car I've ever owned. I mean, this thing is, absolutely insanely obnoxiously fun um, just outrageously fun but beyond impractical so those of you who have commented saying I was thinking about getting a scat pack but now that I saw your video I'm gonna go buy a red eye let me just tell you something if you buy a red eye just plan that unless you work like you know two miles from home or you have a five mile commute or something to work and you don't have to drive anywhere very often then you're good because the other issue with these things are any of the Hellcats is the more miles they get put on them, the more they depreciate and they depreciate hard. And you're looking at the first year depreciation on these things and I'll put it up on the screen, but it's, I don't know, somewhere between thirteen dollars and $15,000 right out of the gate. And then it's not so bad every year if you just keep the miles reasonable. But if you start blowing through the, 
miles and then you blow through the warranty, no one's going to want to buy a 797 horsepower muscle car outside of warranty unless they work on cars themselves. And the problem for you is, is that those people aren't looking to pay top price for these cars. They're looking for something that they can work on. They're looking for a deal so that they can they can work on it themselves and maybe fix it up or bring it back to better condition if you drove the hell out of it. And if you have a lot of miles on it, the assumption is, is that you drove the hell out of it. So people expect that there's gonna be some issues with it. So here's some, some of the used Hellcats that I've looked at over the last few years through this process and knocking engines, weird sounds, loose belts, all kinds of stuff that make, makes you think, you know, somebody drove that car way too hard. Once they get up to that, you know, 30, 40, 50,000 mile level, it starts to get a little uncomfortable to think about buying that car with no warranty unless you are a mechanic or mechanically inclined to work on that car. So in the end, the car I would recommend you buy if you're thinking about buying a Dodge Challenger, the car that I will tell you, like if I didn't have a business, if this, like watch my last video, this wasn't my business, this car is part of a business that I'm running here on YouTube, um, the Scat Pack, the 2019, 2020 Scat Pack wide body is like the coolest car on the road, looks exactly like this car, uh, minus the two snorkels on the hood. And I mean, it's the sexiest looking car out there with the wide body, it's got the cool wheels on it, it's got everything you need. I think you can even get that competition or performance spoiler on the back, it's got the great splitters on the front, it's got everything, it looks amazing. You And frankly, you know, it's what, $55,000? And the total cost of ownership might be with everything, repairs, depreciation, you're still looking at maybe getting it around $65,000 to own that thing for five years, where my Hellcat Red Eye is gonna cost me around $94,000, $95,000 over five years to own. That's Let's call that 100 k It's a house in the Midwest is what this is. So my recommendation, go get a Scat Pack, wide body, and I mean, cherish it, love it, take great care of it. Unless you just wanna go nuts, you have, you have money to spare and you wanna go buy one of these things, go for it. A lot of people say, should I buy a, should I just buy a used Hellcat, like a couple year old used Hellcat? If you can get one for low mileage and if you can extend the warranty on it or if you're mechanically inclined, absolutely, that'd be awesome. I still think the Scat Pack wide body looks way better and is plenty fast and more than anybody really needs for the street. And once you go to that Hellcat, even a uh, used Hellcat, you're back in the same boat where you're parked at the gas station every single day. So if it's your only car and your daily driver, just know that you need to you need to be stopped at the gas station a lot. And sometimes it's not even about the money. Gas prices are really low right now. But sometimes for me, it's, it's about standing there, pumping, pumping, pumping. And then literally I'll make a trip, you know, 50, 70 mile trip, 70 mile trip back and need to get gas again. It's the same day I'm back at the gas pump in this thing. It's cool because I'm making friends. Everybody comes up, wants to see the car and talk about the car, but it's a little uh, little tiring to do that. So I'll end with, go get yourself a Scat Pack. If you want to get a Hellcat, cool. Be crazy like me and do it. But I'll tell you, build a business around it. Make the sucker make you money because it's going to cost you, you know, at least the, the wide body red eye is going to cost you hundred grand over the next five years to own it. And if you buy the uh, just the regular Hellcat, it's still going to be probably $80,000, 85000 after the purchase price, which you can get them at seventy grand and maybe even a little less, but over the five years, that's what it's going to cost you. You're going to, you know, add another fifteen thousand dollars on top of the car just to have the car and maintenance and repairs and gas and depreciation and everything else. So, thank you so much, everybody, for watching. Hope that was useful to you all. I appreciate your support. Please stay tuned for more videos. I cannot wait till we get off of this lockdown. I've got so many great things planned for the car. We're going to make a trip to Vegas. I found the company that'll make the red eye and the badges light up. So after we're past this, we're going to make a trip to Vegas. I'll take you with me and we'll get those installed. So uh, thanks for watching. Talk to you soon. Please like, please subscribe, please comment, keep positive. Stay tuned, stay healthy. Bye.